Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, I'm very excited to tell you that the Prayers to the Holy Spirit book is here. It's been distributed all over the world to everyone who's pre-ordered it in countries all over, all around the world, all around the world. And uh, it's so exciting because my prayer is that as you pray these prayers, that you would encounter more deeply Jesus in your life. You'd certainly come to know more deeply the, the love of the Father and the plan of the Father for all of humankind and particularly for you, and that you would know the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, I really pray it's a great blessing to you. Now, for those who haven't received it, I'll tell you after how you might be able to get it as well. But I pray it's a great blessing to you and you, it's on its way to you. Well, let's continue to talk about knowing Jesus. Uh, this is such a vast topic that we could talk about it for a long, long, long time. Well, it seems that when Jesus met people, when Jesus came face to face with people, that something changed in them. In time, people became expectant that if they encountered Jesus, something would happen. There's so many stories where people were ill, they came to Jesus. People would turn up to hear his preaching. There was this great expectation that if they encountered him, something would happen in their life. Uh, this last weekend, we in, in the ministry, we conducted a, an event. Uh, we're conducting events all over the place. And we, uh, we conducted an event and I was out the front when people started arriving. And as people arrived, there was a great sense of expectancy that something would happen during the course of the day, that people would encounter God and that this would be a deeply meaningful experience. See, that's what meant to happen when we, uh, when we touch and come into contact with Jesus in our life. Have a look at this from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 16. It says this, as Jesus passed by, uh, passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I'll make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Now, I've listened to this passage of scripture and I find it a confronting passage of scripture on the one hand and confusing uh, at the same time. It's confronting because it says that as they saw Jesus and Jesus walked up to them and called them and he said, come, it seems to suggest that they left everything and came. But it's confusing because, well, something in maybe in my mindset stops and goes, well, would that be altogether a good thing to do, to just drop all? What happens if they were parents? Well, we know that uh, Simon Peter was married. Um, did he just leave and not say goodbye to his wife and just take off with Jesus? If any of them did have children, the apostles, did they just not go home and say anything? Did they just leave their boat where it was, just floating away or tied up at the jetty? and never to come back to it, and they just abandoned it and left it for someone else. They're confusing questions to me, and maybe I'm overthinking it, because maybe what the, the Mark is trying to do here when he writes this a few decades later, wait, maybe what Mark is trying to indicate is that when people came into contact with Jesus, face to face, it caused them to be different the encounter caused them to respond differently that touched to their life. Many years ago, I had a Catholic priest who was a mentor to me. I've had a number of different people at times who've been mentors to me and mentors in different things. Sometimes you can have, you can have multiple mentors at the same time mentoring you in different areas. And this priest was particularly mentoring me in the whole area of our relationship with Jesus and particularly building a relationship with Jesus. And he was always on about encountering Jesus, experiencing Jesus so that we would know his voice, hear his voice and that we would follow after him. And he was very much of the opinion that if we don't encounter Jesus intellectually, maybe or emotively in some way or sacramentally in some way, that if we don't encounter Jesus in these ways, how can we have relationship with Jesus? 
that to encounter Jesus in various ways was to change us, to change us. And the more I thought about that, the more I experienced that in my life, the more that became true. Because here they are, Jesus is walking along and he says, come follow me. Some academics suggest maybe they have heard Jesus multiple times. Maybe they've seen him around the area preaching. Maybe they've stopped and listened at times. And then all of a sudden, there's this moment of response where they're able to drop all, in a sense, and follow him. When I read about them dropping all and following him, I've got to admit, I wonder whether the dropping all means that they became wholehearted in going after him, having encountered him. By the end of the day, when we had our time together just recently, and I looked into the faces of some of the people that were there, who'd been there for prayer and listening, it was very clear that some of them had really been touched by God during the course of the day, that they had had an encounter. Well, we can, we can learn to live with the expectation of encounter, the expectation that God will come into our life, that God does hear our prayers. That's the way we're meant to live. We learn to live with the expectation of encounter, that God will come and be part of our life. Now, I'm not talking about the spectacular miracles. I'm talking about often that knowing sense of God being with us, the sense of peace that rises in our conscience about decisions we make, about things that we're meant to do, that, it, that the, the presence of God is within us, allowing us to be, to be led by him and us responding in order to be led by him. I want to encourage you today. Where do you need to stop and say, Lord, I want to experience you, hear you, encounter you in my life today. How might in this next 24 hours, I may know your will in all of the various things that I have to do in my life. Because what we do know is God does want to be part of our life. Well, as we conclude right now, I said I'd come back to this. It is, is the reason that praying to the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit scripture said, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will remind you of what I've done and the Holy Spirit is, is God, the power of God alive within us. The Holy Spirit is what prompts us to be able to do. The Holy Spirit worked in Jesus's life as it descended upon him. So we need the Holy Spirit in our life and, illuminates, and the Holy Spirit illuminates Jesus even more. And so why don't we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and be with us. Now, if you want this, if you want this, if you've already ordered it, it's on your way. If you want this, as you know, I don't sell them. What I want to do is I want to make it possible for people to be able to get it. And so for the cost of the mail and the cost of the, the printing, you can send in that amount. If you're someone who has the ability to contribute more, of which many people do, so that we can get it to even more people and help them praying for the world and for themselves, uh, you decide how much you want to contribute. Just go to the Give tab or just uh, go to this address and, and help me help people encounter God more in their life because it changes everything about them. The apostles were never the same. And sometimes we can say, well, that's all well and good for them, but what about me? I'm not quite called to be an apostle in the same way, but the same principles apply. In our lives, we all can use and need to know God more in our life. We could use God, but we need to know God more deeply in our life. Well, I want to pray a prayer called Prayer to Experience New Life. And it says this, Loving Father, I come before you today in the name of Jesus and say, Come Holy Spirit to me. May your breath that gives me physical and spiritual life blow into me. Come Holy Spirit to me. Bring life, fulfillment and vitality to what I'm doing. May this be an enlightened experience of your presence and power in my life. Come Holy Spirit to me. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. I do pray that you would encounter Jesus more deeply and the power and through the power of the Holy Spirit today. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.